Hello, my name is Teacher Stephanie. Today I'm doing a walkthrough um, for the um, either Mach 2 or occasionally I've seen this one as a Mach 3 lesson. Uh, it's called Our Home um, or Earth Our Home Pollution. Um, if you've um, received this lesson, then congratulations for making it this far. You've at least already passed um, your interview and probably your Mach 1 too, so you're almost there. Very nice job. Um, this uh, video is for my referrals that I'm already helping along, um, but if you happen to find it on YouTube as well, then you know by all means <laughs> use it. Um, if you have any questions and you'd like to contact me about anything in this walkthrough, then um, I'm really easy to find on Facebook because of my name. No one else has it, so feel free to reach out through Facebook. And if you don't have a referring teacher, or if you have a referring teacher that's not helping you, because sometimes that happens, people leave their links and then never talk to their referrals. <laughs> I talk to my referrals like every single day. Um, then feel free to send an email to Teach VIP. Um, I put the email um, link below with my referral code. It's 02PUN0, both are zeros, um, with um, my email too, which is down there, and they will add you to my list. Um, and I would be happy to guide you through the rest of the process and help you get hired. I only get a bonus if you get hired. So it's in my best interest to make sure that that happens. And plus, I love this job. So I really want everyone else to have it too, because it is fantastic. Um, and I stay 100% booked. So I'm not worried about you stealing my children because they love me and I love them. So they're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, anyway, this is um, a lesson for Mach 2 and possibly Mach 3. Don't freak out about um, Mach 3. It's very rare. I've only seen it happen once or twice. Um, so don't think that you're going to have to do a Mach 3. I believe you only take Mach 3 if you miss Mach 2 by like one point. That's the only way you do the Mach 3. Um, so usually you either pass or fail Mach 2. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and um, get started. Um, I'm going to go to the introduction slide. If you have your PowerPoint open to the side um, as well, and you watch this video on one side of your screen and go through your PowerPoint with me in the other, um, that would be great because I can't actually show you the PowerPoint. I can't put it on YouTube um, because it's not my property as VAB Kids. Um, but you, if you're already in the application process, then you have it. Um, so go ahead and open that up and just scroll through with me. On this first slide, I am going to use to introduce myself, my reward system, and I'm going to use it to gauge the student's level. This is an L5 lesson, so this student should have very high English ability. Most of these students at level five, and if you're teaching this one, they probably determined they thought you would be better for the higher level, for the intermediate students. Um, most students at this level, it's almost like teaching um, a student um, an English student um, vocabulary. It's almost like a vocabulary lesson. Um, they have very good conversational English usually. Uh, usually they have a lot of vocabulary. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes it's more limited um, to just what they've learned from these lessons. So I use this slide to gauge their level. I use it to gauge um, how quickly they respond. I use it to gauge how serious um, or you know how silly they are. So I can kind of gauge how I'm going to teach. Um, so I use it for um, a lot of purposes. I don't just um, introduce the lesson. So on the first slide, I'm going to go and begin. I'm going to pretend that I'm teaching and um, you can just follow along, I guess. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Teacher Stephanie. What is your name? My name is Jason. Hello, Jason. It is so nice to meet you. Jason. How old are you? 10 years old. That's awesome. Jason, how do you feel today? Happy. I am happy too. Wonderful. Let's see. Like I said, I introduced my um, reward system on this slide as well because I don't use the VIP Kid reward slides. They're just kind of repetitive um, and sometimes not that exciting. Um, I use digital rewards um, through a program called Manicam. I have a video on that if you want to watch it. Um, I did not use Manicam through my interview process. I used a physical reward. I uh, I can't reach it. Um, I have marbles in a jar, a physical reward, another physical reward. Um, actually, I won't tell you that. If you want to know about more physical rewards, send me a message and I will tell you more about them because <laughs> I have a lot of different ideas I do with the older kids that work really well. But, um, but yeah, you'll have to message me for those. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to use Manicam today. So I also um, use this slide to do that. And then I skip 
um, the second slide completely. The way you can do that is if you take your mouse and you hover it, um, not in the video feed where you see yourself, but right down here um, on your PowerPoint screen, um, you'll see it'll pop up and it'll say, you know, you're on slide six out of, well, right now you're in one, but you know, one out of 21 slides. You can type in the little text box slide three or slide 10, wherever you want to go. And you can jump directly to that one instead of click, 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 click on the arrow and skipping through them. So I always go directly from one to three and never go to slide two. So I'm going to introduce my reward system as well. Let's see, Jason, do you like, hmm, do you like pandas? Yes or no? Usually they tell me no for the first one. And honestly, 10-year-old boy probably doesn't like pandas. Um, my girls love pandas. Some of my boys do too, though. I used it today, actually, with a boy named Jason. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so usually they tell me the no the first time. Hmm, all right, let's see. Do you like race cars? Yes or no? Yes? Great. When you do a good job today, I will give you race cars. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so I've already skipped from slide, uh, slide one all the way to slide three. <clears throat> this is a poem called I Am Earth. Um, this um, slide, I don't see any words I think that they're going to have a difficult time with. Maybe together, but I want to see anyway. I want to see what his reading ability is. So I'm not going to underline and preview any words. I'm going to let him go ahead and read this to me. So I'll read the title. I Am Earth. Jason, please read this poem to me. And I'll put a bracket on the um, on the left side of the all of the words, the entire thing. I use brackets a lot because sometimes I want my students to stop after the first or second sentence so we can discuss something. And sometimes I want them to read an entire section. So my students get very accustomed to knowing however far my brackets go, that's how far I want them to read. So I'm gonna put a bracket um, to the left of this entire thing. This is my first time meeting the student. He doesn't know what that means yet, but he will learn very quickly. So I'm gonna put brackets around the entire thing. <clears throat> and then I'm going to listen to Jason read. I am earth. You're in my hands. I am earth. We're in my care. I am earth. Together we stand. I am earth. This moment in time we share. So I'll do a lot of hand motions while they're reading. Um, I might, you know, show them earth. I might put it in my hand. Together, I normally, you know, do things like that for together. I might so, you know, we stand and my motion stand, but I don't actually read or say anything. I let um, the student read everything and I usually just do the motion silently. Um, my students that I've taught for a while, they start doing them when they read as well. Um, TPR, you usually don't just want to gesture yourself. You want the student to gesture as well. In level five, you don't have quite as much TPR because the student um, has a good grasp on everything. So you don't have to use as many props or as much TPR, but it does still help um, jog their memory quite a bit, especially if it's a regular student, whatever TPR you usually use, um, and like I said, it's only TPR if the student's doing it with you. So it's gesturing if I'm just gesturing. Um, but the TPR you use consistently um, will help them um, remember things as well. So you want to make sure the student's doing it with you if it's something you're using to help them understand something. Um, but anyway, that's that's you know that's just a tidbit there. So um, if you have a physical, you don't have to you know because I have a digital um, globe. But um, if you have a physical one, you could like hold a globe here. Maybe one of those blow up ones you can get real cheap from Oriental Trading or, you know, probably staples or something, um, you could show them just to give them um, a visual of earth. Very nice reading, Jason. Great pronunciation. Can you say this word one more time? Together. I've underlined together. I'm pretending that he didn't, you know, say it real fluently. And then I'll make sure he has together. Great job. You get a star and a race car. All right, so you're not going to have stars in um, any of your mock lessons or your interview, but we give stars, five stars every time, and um, then the secondary reward system as well. All right, so the next slide says, where do we live? Hmm. Environment. I've underlined environment in the green and I've underlined it in both um, the sentences below. Jason, what is an environment? So I put brackets around where I want him to read again. An environment is the place where something or someone lives. 
where we live is called our environment. Each environment is special. If he stopped after the green, then I would start underlining like where we live. So he knows I want him to continue on reading. I don't want to read this for him. I want him to read it. If he can't, if he's really struggling, then I might help. But I want to see if he can. Special he might have a hard time with. So I'm going to pretend that he did. Jason, this word is special. Special. Right, yeah. The C in special sounds like an SH. Special. Great job. Very nice. So, Jason, what types of animals do you think live in this environment? And I've circled the forest. Um, if he's been with me, it'd be good for a while or she, um, then they've actually learned about forests, deserts, um, planes. They've learned about a lot of land um, forms um, and environments. So he's probably got a good idea. And if he's L5, even if he hasn't been with VIP kid, he probably has a good idea from um, his own schooling or his own um, lessons he's taken. So I'm going to pretend he tells me bears live in the forest. Right. Bears live in the forest. Make sure that you um, are making sure they're speaking in complete sentences and making sure they're using those sentences correctly. If they say bear, bear, live in the forest or bears lives in the forest, you need to correct that. Even if it's something irregular like deer, um, deers live in the forest. Make sure that you repeat it correctly and then get them to repeat it correctly. But I'm going to pretend he said it fine because L5 probably did. Right, bears live in the forest. Hmm, what about this environment? What animals live in this environment? I'm going to see if he knows it's the desert and what animals live in it. Camels live in the desert. Um, if he doesn't know one or the other, if he knows it's a desert and doesn't know the animals or knows the animals but doesn't know the desert, then I'll, you know, put it together and then have him repeat it. Hmm, what about this environment? Who lives here? Right, people live in this environment. Hmm, I live in Florida in the United States. Florida has some big cities, but I live in a small town. Jason, do you live in a big city or a small town? I'm going to pretend he lives in a big city just because most of the students do. Awesome. So you see a lot of tall buildings like this. Very good. Trash. I've underlined trash. I want him to say it. Can you read about trash to me? I'm going to have him read. Trash is something that is not useful anymore. We should put our trash away properly. Hmm. And I've only put brackets around that part because I want to stop here. I haven't put it around the second part. What do you think properly means? They might just tell you, I don't know. Properly means correctly, right. So where should we put our trash to put it away properly? Now I'm going to put brackets around the second part. We should put our trash in trash bins and not the ground. Right, so we, we shouldn't throw our trash on the ground. We should put it in a trash bin. We should dispose of it properly, properly. Maybe not say dispose of it, maybe say throw it away properly. Um, but I do, I usually do give them, you know, higher level vocabulary. At this, at this level, they can handle it. Um, but yeah, do whatever you think is best. <clears throat> All right, so the next um, uh, slide has harm on it. I'm going to underline harm. I don't see any other words that I think the students have a hard time with. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the picture, though. I'm going to circle the picture. Jason, what do you see in this picture? Yeah, there's trash. They just read about trash. They'll probably say trash. There's trash around this animal's neck. Yeah, that's not good, is it? Can you tell me what it means to harm? Harm means to hurt someone or something. Right. What harmed this animal? Put my brackets around the oil leak and the next part. The oil leak and the sea harm the animals. Throwing our trash into the environment will harm the animals and plants that live there. Right. So oil needs to be thrown away properly. Plastic on this animal's neck needs to be thrown away properly. We shouldn't throw our trash on the ground. All right, next one. Jason, what can harm earth? Throwing trash, I've already put my brackets into our environment, can harm earth. Can you think of anything else that can harm Earth? 
<clears throat> who knows what he knows. He might start telling me about carbon emissions or global warming. He might tell me about a number of things. These students are very bright and very intelligent. So I'm going to listen to what he has to say. I'm going to agree or disagree if it's incorrect. I'm not going to let him go if it's uh, incorrect, of course. And, um, you know, I might add to it a little bit, but I mostly want to listen to what he says and just agree. Excellent job, Jason. You are so smart. Here's another star and another race car. Great job. Clean up the neighborhood. Please read the story to me. I'm going to put my brackets around the entire slide. He might have trouble with dangerous, but I'm going to wait and see. Jenny sees so much trash in her neighborhood. The trash makes it dangerous to play outside. All the animals are unhappy and the people are sad. Jenny wants to help change the environment. She wants to do something to make the environment more beautiful and safer. What can she do? What do you think she can do, Jason? She can clean up the trash. She can dispose of it properly. Um, he should, you know, probably give me something like that. If he didn't get dangerous, um, I don't interrupt my students in the middle of their reading. If they mispronounce something, I wait until the end. And then I go back and I underline the words and I practice with them. Um, the reason I do that is because I think that it's a little bit rude to interrupt someone while they're reading. So I don't do that. I think it's confusing, you know, it, makes them lose their train of thought. And also, um, because sometimes there's a lag, you know, our signal is going all the way to China and vice versa. So sometimes there's a couple of second lag. And if you um, think you're going to interrupt them quickly while they're still struggling with the word and correct it, um, they've probably already moved on by the time <laughs> your voice comes through. Sometimes there's not a lag, but a lot of times there is. Um, so he might already be, you know, on outside and then now dangerous has just come through because I've said it two seconds ago. He's gonna go back and start reading it again. It's just very confusing. So I wait until the end of the slide. Jason, this word is dangerous. I've underlined it, dangerous. Dangerous means not safe. It could harm you. Dangerous, and I'll get him to repeat it for me as well. Can you please continue reading? I'm going to put brackets all the way around it. Her sister, Laura, says, we need to work together to clean our environment. They begin to clean the neighborhood. It isn't easy. People throw so much trash on the ground. It harms the environment and makes all of the animals sick. Um, so a lot of times when the students are reading, I'll do little hand motions like that. I might, you know, demonstrate throwing trash on the ground. I might, uh, makes them sick. I'm not reading. I'm just listening. And, um, I'm usually doing some motions just to help um, give meaning to the words they're reading to help them with their comprehension. Um, so at the bottom, it says, you know, have you ever helped clean up your neighborhood? Yes. What did you do? Awesome. That is very good. Why do you think some people throw trash on the ground? lazy, they don't care, they don't know, whatever he tells me, as long as it makes sense, I'm going to agree with. Very nice. I'm not even going to say anything on this next slide. I'm just going to put brackets around it and motion, and he's going to know I want him to keep reading. Jenny asks, what can we do to keep our environment clean? Laura thinks they can go to their neighbor. They can, oh, I'm sorry, they can tell their neighbors not to throw trash on the ground and they should pick up trash whenever they see it lying around. She says that they should work hard to keep their environment clean. What do you think they can do? What can people do to keep the environment clean? Yes, they can use trash bins. Yes, they can throw the trash away properly. Jason, do you recycle? Do you know what recycle means? He probably does, but I'm going to pretend he doesn't. Recycle means to use things again. We can reuse them, use them again, or send them somewhere else to be used again. So sometimes plastic bottles, I would have a plastic bottle to show. I don't have one on me. Um, and paper can all be recycled and used again. So we don't make the environment dirty and messy. All right now, obviously that was an expansion. I would do that if I had a high level student and we had extra time and we were moving through the slides quickly. If I did not have a high level student, if I had one that was reading um, and struggling with pronunciation, obviously on that slide, I would go back and I would practice pronunciation. So I might go back and um, underline whenever. I might break it into um, syllables. I might 
put a um, slash where when is and then ev and then our whenever whenever lying maybe the same thing lying so I would depending you know on my student I would do different things on these slides I might focus just on the lesson I might expand to teach them about recycling um, you know it depends on the student all right so we're still going with the story I'm listening to Jason again let's not buy a little and I've drawn my brackets family cleans up the neighborhood it takes a lot of hard work but they think it's worth it now they can safely play outside and the environment is much cleaner and more beautiful look at what people can do when they work together on this one if i'm still expanding something i might do is these kids sometimes even the higher level ones they read um sometimes a little robotic like so on the last one i'll say do you see the exclamation point and i would circle it this means this is an exciting statement. So we need to read it with a little bit of feeling. Look at what people can do when they work together. And I might have him repeat it like that with a little bit of feeling um, and emotion. Because um, like I said, sometimes they're missing that. If we're short for time, not going there because exclamation points aren't part of this lesson. That's just an expansion or an elaboration. Um, so at the bottom it says, hmm, Jason, do you want to live in a clean environment? Yes, me too. How is a clean environment better than a dirty one? There's not trash everywhere. You know, I'm sure he's saying something logical. Jason, can you describe your environment? You said you live in a big city. Is there a lot of trash on the ground? Sometimes. Do you ever pick up the trash? Sometimes <laughs> you might say no because it's gross or something, but you know, we can discuss whatever he does say. All right, sorry if you're hearing a lot of background noise. Not only are my children awake because it's evening, but um, I live in Florida and Hurricane Irma is going on outside right now, outside my window. So um, we're safe, we're prepared, and, and um, we're kind of central, so I think we're okay. But um, if you hear, whoosh, that's, uh, that's the wind right outside. So <laughs> I figured I was cooped up indoors, so I may as well make a video while I'm in here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the next lesson or the next slide, put the story in order. So in this one, um, the pictures are clues and we want the student to tell you what happened, to do a retell basically. Jason, in the story you just read, what was the first thing that happened? Can you write a number one next to the picture that happened first? So hopefully he'll put a number one down here in the picture with the trash. Hey, tell me about it. There was a lot of trash in the neighborhood. Very good job. Hmm, what happened second? The next. Jenny wanted to clean up the neighborhood. She wanted to do something, right? So that should be the picture of her telling her mom. <clears throat> Hopefully he puts a number two right there. Um, or I'll say, can you write a number two? If he doesn't, if he's confused, I'm gonna jump back to the slides and let him figure it out. I'm not gonna give him the answer. I'm not gonna stay on the slide. I'm gonna go back two slides and I'm gonna let him figure it out. Right, right. Jenny wanted to do something. She wanted to clean it up. What did Jenny decide to do? What happened third? Hopefully he draws a number three or writes a number three. Yeah, Jenny and her family helped clean up the mess. They even asked their neighbors. Very good job. What happened last or fourth in the story? Now the neighborhood's clean. Yes, they can play outside. Great job, Jason. Here's another star and another race car. You are so smart. Hmm. What does Jenny see around her neighborhood? A lot of trash. Yes, tons of trash. How do you think Jenny feels about the trash on the ground? Not happy. What does Jenny and her family do to help? Do you think it's enough? Why or why not? Yeah, it was nice and clean at the end. I think they did a good job. Now, do you think they'll have to continue picking up all of the time? 
He might say yes. He might say no. Now that it's clean, maybe the neighbors will too. I'm just going to, you know, let him tell me a little bit about it. That's an extra question. So again, like I said, um, usually with my L5s, we have extra time. So we, we elaborate and we take it further. Um, if your interviewer, like I said, is struggling to recall things, um, then you're not going to have time for extra questions. In fact, if they're struggling to recall these answers, like I said, I would not um, give them the answers unless I was really strapped for time, I would use my little hover box again and I would go back three or four slides to the story and I would, you know, look at this picture. What does Jenny see around her neighborhood? And I would, you know, go back to the slide with the trash and, and let him answer the question, but I would not answer it for him. All right, now we're into the grammar portion. I'm gonna read this part. When we want to talk about a decision, a choice we have made about the future, that has not happened yet. We use going to. Read this sentence. I am going to pick up the trash. Very good. So going to is in the future. It has not happened yet. So, hmm, there's some trash on the ground. I am going to pick up the trash. I had not picked it up yet. I was doing it in the future. Hmm. Which picture shows this sentence? <coughs> I underlined um, or I put a bracket around, I am going to clean the environment. Um, he'll probably either draw a line or circle it. Uh, if he doesn't, then I'll say, can you draw a line or can you circle the correct picture? I want him to read the sentence though. I don't want to read it. Remember, you want them to speak, not you. Very nice job. Hmm, what about this sentence? Put my bracket around it or underline it. He's going to play outside, draw the correct line. Hmm, not even gonna tell him what about this one because he already knows the drill. Put a bracket around it or underline. We are going to, to work hard and then he draws the line. Excellent job. Very nice reading, Jason. Here's another star and another race car. Wonderful job. Hmm. So when we are talking about the future, sometimes we use the words going to. Sometimes we use another word. Do you know what it is for future? Right, Will. If he's already learned um, going to and Will is included on this next slide, that means he's already learned it. So he probably knows. Um, but if he doesn't, you can tell him. Sometimes we say will. We will pick up the trash. Both of these are future tense. Future tense. Hmm. These sentences are talking about the past, the future, or the present right now. Can you tell me which one is correct? Have him read the first one. She harmed the environment. I'm gonna underline harmed. Harmed. Hmm, I see my verb plus ed. Is that past, present, or future tense? Past, it happened in the past. Great job. Hmm, what about this one? Put my brackets or underline. <coughs> People harm the earth. Yes, that is present tense. People harm the earth right now. We are harming the earth. Hmm, what about the next one? Put my brackets. We will not harm the earth anymore. I'm going to underline will not harm. Yes, will not harm. Future tense. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to bracket the last one. We are going to clean up trash this weekend. Correct. Future tense. We have not done it yet. We are going to. Excellent job, Jason. Hmm. For this slide, um, they're choosing is or are correctly. Um, so they're choosing um, is if it's one object and are if it's more than one. So um, usually I will, you know, have a reminder if they need it. Um, um, to show them, to guide them if they need help. Sometimes they just know it. Hmm, can you tell me which would make sense in the sentence? Is or are? And sometimes I'll write um, an, uh, one or a two um, above the, um, the nouns. And then I'll also, I'll like put something like this up. Um, so above pollution, I wrote a one and above trash, I wrote a two. Pollution and trash 
are going to harm the animals. Very nice job. Number two, I put a one above the trash. Making more trash is going to harm the environment. Excellent job. Um, this slide is a perfect example. I have a lot of people say, should I follow the teacher directions exactly? Should I do exactly what they say? Well, on this slide, should you follow the teacher directions exactly? <laughs> it says one, two, and three. Are there three questions? No. Sometimes the teacher directions are incorrect. A uh, question I get on one of the beginner level slides often, uh, it says something like use the letters to have the students spell words like not. But there's no O available. And teachers are always saying, how do I teach the word not? There's no O. They just want you to teach a CVC word. And I think they give you A and U. So you can do ham and hum and um, rum. And yes, we teach rum sometimes. They don't know what rum is. <laughs> and um, jam. So it's just a CVC word. They don't want you to actually spell not. The teacher directions are there to guide you, um, but you can deviate a little bit. Um, what I always suggest is doing what's best for the student. Um, sometimes the teacher directions are too complex for the student. Sometimes you don't need to ask every single question down there. Sometimes they don't give you enough or they're incorrect. So you have to adapt and you have to change them. Um, during my interview, I was, um, I was praised a lot for adaptability. Um, so make sure that you adapt and that you do things um, to your students' needs um, best. And I've heard some interviewers are sticklers and they're like, well, you didn't do exactly what these teacher directions said. Um, if you don't complete an objective at all, then that's a problem. And I can see why they would say that. But if they're just being stickler and saying, I think you should have done it this way, or the teacher direction said this, um, then I wouldn't be afraid to say, well, I, um, I realized that they said that. But when I was teaching you, you didn't seem to really understand um, when I was teaching it that way. So I decided to um, show you in a different way um, to see if I could reach you um, in, a, in a different you know, way of learning. And um, I wouldn't be afraid to defend that at all if you have to. Um, because if you have been a teacher before and if you've been in the classroom, you know um, adaptability is something you're going to have to do a lot um, so you can reach all of your students. So make sure that you're flexible and um, that you do realize sometimes the teacher directions are just wrong <laughs> and make sure that you can, um, you can teach without them. All right, so the next one, phonics, fun phonics. I'm going to read the first part. Why can make many different sounds? Here, it makes the long E sound. I'm going to circle the word B. Hmm, what is this? This is a B, right? This is a B. Sometimes Y makes the long E sound, just like in the word B. What is this word? I've circled happy. <coughs> happy, great. What is this word? Angry, very good. In both of these words, Y makes the E sound. All right, I'm going to go to the next phonics slide. So Y is a vowel when it makes the long E sound. Hmm, what were the other vowels in the alphabet? All right, A, E, I, O, U. Very nice job. So Y is making a sound like long E. That's why it's a vowel in these words. Can you read these to me? I'm going to put a little square or bracket around silly, rainy, city, and busy. He read them all perfectly. Hmm, what sound does Y usually make in the beginning of a word when it's in front of a word? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why makes the y sound? Can you read these words? And I've used my mouse or my um, yeah, my mouse to put a square around those. Yes, you yam yawn. Excellent job. So why is not a vowel in these words? It's a consonant. <coughs> the next slide has a tree. Hmm. Can you add a y to these words? Is it making the long e sound or the y y sound? Long E, very good. What are these words? Happy, very, tiny, city. Great job, Jason. Here is your fifth star and your fifth race car. Fantastic job. 
All right, those slides are very quick. You should be able to make up a lot of time on those slides. I wouldn't say rush through them, but if you're pressed for time, you don't have to spend a full minute on those. Um, they're very easy to understand. Your student's probably going to um, blast through them. So don't um, be afraid to move on. If you do need um, more time because your student, um, if you need to waste more time because your student's very smart and moving quickly, um, your interviewer, then you can expand. Ooh, can you think of any other words that have a Y with the long E sound? Great, yes, funny, perfect example, funny. Hmm, what about this word? Mary, yeah, Mary is like happy. Very nice job. So you can, if you need to um, not make up time, if you need to waste more time, you can expand there as well and you can do some extra words. All right, the very next one, I want Jason to read all these sentences. So I'm just gonna say, what does harm mean? I'm gonna let him look at them. Harm means to hurt someone or something. He can draw a line um, or just read the definition. That's fine with me either way. I might draw a line for him. <clears throat> Great job. What does environment mean? Environment is the place where something or someone lives. Perfect. Hmm. And what is trash? Trash is something that is thrown away. Excellent job, Jason. You are so smart. Hmm. Tell me, what can you see in the pictures? I see trash in the first picture. I see a sidewalk in the second picture. Yeah, how are they different? How are they not the same? First one's very dirty, the second one's very clean. Which part would you like to visit? Me too. I would like to go to the second part. Yeah, it's not fun to play in trash. Yeah. What do you think we could do to help the area in the first picture? could throw the trash away properly. Yes, we could help clean up. Fantastic job. Hmm, what can harm your environment? I'm gonna let him read the next part. Think about the trash you throw away. What can it harm? It can harm animals, it can harm people, it can harm the earth. I'm sure he's gonna give me a lot of good answers. Right, so what can we do? What can we do, Jason, to help make the environment a better place? Yes, we can throw away our trash. We can recycle, reuse our items. Great job. Exactly right. All right, Jason, that's the end of our lesson. It was very nice to meet you. You did a great job today. Excellent reading and very nice pronunciation. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Oh, and usually for my students, I do, uh, I'll say, you earned all five stars. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> all right. And like I said, you don't have to do that. I just, um, I use Manicam. Um, I did not for my interviews, so they're not going to expect it or anything. Don't worry about that. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Manicam, like I said, I have another video or um, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. All right, so that wraps up our lesson. Um, it's been about 37 minutes. Remember, you want to finish up in 25 to 28. Um, so I rambled a lot in the beginning and during. Um, so I'm sure that lesson, the level fives, your issue with the level fives is usually not finishing on time. It's usually having extra time because they're so bright and they know so much. Um, so like I said, elaboration, I elaborate a lot and expand on the slides and sometimes teach them additional information or just ask them to relate the content to their life. Um, but um, it, it all depends. You do get level fives that are in level five that maybe aren't quite ready or are, um, but they, you know, they have the comprehension, but the fluency just isn't quite there or the pronunciation Maybe they haven't um, been learning English as long um, and they can comprehend it well, but they're their, um, you know, their accent is thicker. Um, so sometimes it might just be pronunciation that slows you down. Um, but like I said, you know, adjust according to your student or your interviewer in this case. Um, a few other tips. Um, wear orange. 
um, the interviewers really like. Um, if you wear orange, it's not required by VIP Kid anymore, um, but you look like an employee and the students expect it, so I wear orange every day. I've got like eight orange shirts now or something. Um, I don't know where you live, but I live in Florida. There's a store called Rainbow, and these shirts are like $3 at Rainbow, so I stocked up. And um, also, um, wear makeup. I don't have any makeup on right now um, because it's almost seven o'clock at night and there's a hurricane outside and I'm locked indoors. Um, but on the webcam, you can see I look kind of um, kind of pasty. I'm kind of pale anyway, um, but the webcam does wash you out and especially your lips. They do ask. Um, I've got a lot of dark um, or bright, I've got bright pink and dark red um, lipsticks. You want to wear something on your lips to help your lips stand out because when you're working on things like pronunciation and stuff, um, you want, you know, sometimes, especially with the little kids, you want to draw a lot of attention to your mouth. Um, ill, all, and L is something we teach. Um, so you want them to see your mouth movement since those sound so similar. Um, so dark lipstick is usually recommended or bright lipstick at least. And, um, and I usually have full makeup on. Um, I'm not a person that wears makeup daily, but I do to work for VIP kit or blush, um, mascara, eyeliner eyeshadow and lipstick. I don't do anything fancy. It takes me three or four minutes to put my makeup on in the morning. I'm not good at makeup because I don't wear it often, but I do wear it um, because I've seen teachers get um, parent complaints saying they looked tired or they looked sickly. And they might not. They might have looked in the mirror and looked fine, but the webcam does tend to wash you out. Lighting is important too. I have an overhead light above me and I also have a lamp sitting directly behind my um, computer um, and behind my webcam. It has a shade on it um, and has a, a more of a, a golden hued um, light bulb in there to make me look not so flushed. Let me see if you can see a difference. Mm, that's me without it. See, I'm a little bit darker, a little paler. That's me with it. Kind of, I'm still pale, but <laughs> I have no makeup on. A little more color and a little, um, you know, less um, white, whitewashed. Um, so, yeah, have good lighting, um, wear makeup, look professional, look like you're going to an interview. Um, if you're nervous, don't be afraid to tell your interviewer you're a little bit nervous, but you are so excited about this job. You know, if it was a student in front of you, it'd be a lot less awkward. You'd do a much better job. Um, you know, don't be afraid to talk to them like they're a human being. They've been there, they, um, you know, went through the same process you are going through. They taught with VAP Kid and they became a mock mentor. Um, you know, so they they know the drill and they had an interview to be a mock mentor too. So they know the drill and don't be afraid to tell them, you know, I'm confident that I will be great at this job. And I'm confident if I were teaching a student right now that this lesson would go perfectly. But if I get nervous and I make a mistake, you know, please forgive me because this is a little bit awkward. And, um, and you know, I know it would go better with a student. So don't be afraid to you know, talk to them like they're human. Um, don't, you know, don't feel robotic or stiff or like um, you are following, um, you know, a, a script or anything. They don't like to see that. They like to see you. So let your personality shine through. This is just a walkthrough. This is just a guide. You do not have to do everything the same way I did. You might have a much better way to teach something um, than I did. I also, you know, these are kind of awkward for me to make as well. I'm talking to myself right now and I don't have a student. Um, so I assure you, I'm a better teacher when I'm teaching my students as well. Um, so uh, like I said, you know, if, if I, I made a few mistakes, I think I misread something, I corrected myself. Um, you know, anything that you see like that in there, don't, don't make me <laughs> do an even better job than I did. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, if you'd like me to be a referring teacher or you appreciated my videos, I have a lot more um, as well for all the lessons um, that my referrals have taken. I usually make new ones every couple of weeks. They, um, they switch them up for the interviews. They, they, change them out and give new ones because they don't want people, I think, to be too practiced, so they change it up. Um, so I make them every couple of weeks, and it takes time. Um, usually, you know, sometimes my child will scream. I'll be 20 minutes into a video, and my child will scream, and I'll start all over again. Um, so, you know, this takes time and effort, and um, I do appreciate, um, you know, when people choose me to be the referring teacher. I don't mind helping you, and I don't mind the extra work at all. Um, but um, I, I do help people when I'm not the referring teacher. I've had people um, that reach out to me and ask me to and never add me. Um, so I do, 
you know, still help them and get them hired for free. But it is always great to get that $50 bonus because I, um, I feed my family this job. I do this job full time. I have four children and I am my family's sole provider. I'm the breadwinner and I'm the, the only provider um, right now. So I support my family just on my VIP kid income. And uh, not a lot of that comes from referrals, but some of the bonus money does from referrals and um, it's well appreciated. And um, it's something you can do when you get hired as well. It's not required at all. It's not required at all, um, but it is a nice bonus. So my code is below, my email address is below. Um, my name is very easy to find me on Facebook. If you email me or comment on here, I do check it um, regularly, somewhat regularly, um, but my Facebook, you know, it dings at me just like a text message does. Um, so I, I check that pretty frequently. If I don't answer you today or tomorrow, it's because there's a hurricane <laughs> and it might not have power. So I won't be using my phone very much here soon. Um, but um, but yeah, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Thanks so much for watching. My name's teacher Stephanie. Have a great day.